and peace to you and welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church where we are loving, serving, and transforming lives. I am Reverend Dr. Iantha Mills. I am the senior pastor here and I welcome you on this Lord's Day. We're glad you joined us for worship. On this third Sunday of the month, Asbury continues its 2021 Ebony Bishops preaching series. Through this series, Asbury offers its national and historic pulpit to the Ebony Bishops of the United Methodist Church to bring prophetic words on the issues of the day and share messages of hope during these critical uh, times in the history of our nation and our denomination. And today it is our joy to welcome Bishop Sharma D. Lewis as our preacher. You are reminded of these events in the life of the church. At 5 p.m., join us on Facebook Live or YouTube for The Bridge, our contemporary worship service. Pastor Ramon Jackson will be preaching. On next Wednesday, July 21st, and the Wednesday after that, July 28th at 6.30, we are holding a regathering virtual planning retreat for all of our ministry area leaders. Please mark your calendar. Please be in prayer for these members and their families. Prayers for Valerie Reed and Morris James as they recover from illness. Prayers for the family of Lonise Robinson in her loss. Her service will be held Tuesday, July 20th, 11 o'clock here at Asbury. Prayers for the family of Mary Harris. Her memorial service will be held Friday, July 23rd at 11 a.m. here at Asbury. And prayers for the family of Evelyn Gray in her loss. Arrangements for memorial service will be announced at a later date. We have a wonderful prayer joy today. The National Trust for Historic Preservation has announced the 2021 African American Cultural Heritage Action Fund grant recipients. And we, Asbury United Methodist Church, are one of them. This year's grants will help protect and restore 40 important black historic landmarks around the country. And we are honored to be among them. We are, of course, grateful to the National Trust for Historic Preservation for this honor and the partnership. And we are so very thankful to our very own Kelvin Childs for his leadership in the grant application process. And now let us join in our gathering praise, the Church's One Foundation.
Asbury has much to be thankful for this day, for the choir's contribution of ministry and music, and then for the awarding of a grant in order to continue Amen. maintenance for the ministry of Asbury Church on this facility. So we have a lot to be thankful for that God has a way of keeping on blessing us. And God has God's eye on Asbury Church to be here a couple more years through this renovation, through the restoration, through all that has taken place with the pandemic and Black Lives Matter and then through other aspects of history that this church has survived. God, through grants and your contributions and your presence and prayers, is saying that Asbury is going to be here a couple more years. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And so as we go to God in prayer, and prayer is not an unfamiliar experience at Asbury because many have come and many have prayed, many have cried, many have left a burden, many have picked up grace and Many have picked up blessings for the deliverance of God being such an awesome God. And so now let's pray to the God of our salvation and the God who keeps on looking beyond our fault and loving us and giving us forgiveness and grace. Let us pray. Once more, God, we, thy people, come to you grateful that we have a God that we can go to and pray. We're grateful this day for your blessings of a contribution to the life of this church through members who have been faithful to your disciples who have walked in and out of this holy space and can say over and over, truly the Lord has been in this place. We come to you recognizing that we're the ones that stand in need of prayer today. It's been a hard week for some of us. It's been an easy week for others. It's been a, a week that has had some mountains and some valleys, but yet we can all say God has been good and brought us through the last seven days. We're glad that we can say the church is one foundation this morning is indeed Jesus Christ, our Lord. We're glad that we can even pray out words such as, oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. Mm -hmm. And we're thankful you have been our shelter in the stormy blast. Praise. And we're thankful that you have given us an eternal home. Help us, oh God, to be so faithful that when traveling days are over on this earth, that we can hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful yeah. servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rule over many things. For where I am, there you shall be also. Yes. We're thankful that we can get and go through so many experiences, and somehow our souls look back and say, I wonder, how did we make it over? But we're glad that our soul has been connected to your soul and we've had a holy communion through this last seven days. And we're thankful, God, that Asbury keeps on getting good news. Asbury keeps on getting blessings. We're thankful, God, that Asbury is in a position even in, the mount, in this midst of challenges Asbury's light has still been on. The preacher has been able to preach and remind us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. We thank you for her leadership to remind us that no matter what comes in our direction, is nothing that God and Asbury Church can Verse. get through together. Verse. Amen. Verse. And so we lift you up this day. We lift up your holy name. We lift up praises and we lift up thanksgiving. We look at our own circumstances and begin to realize from the depths of our souls, it is us who stand in need of prayer this day. So be that God that incline your ear to us. Be that God that looks favor upon us. Be that God that we can just say, God has brought us a mighty long way. 
And we come this far by faith. Tune our hearts. Tune up our faith. Tune up our grounding in you. Tune up our hope. Tune up our healings. Tune up our justice. Tune us up so that when the week that is coming in comes in our direction, may we see new mercies and may we see deeper and new grace. For this day, we just want to say thank you. We want to thank you for Asbury going through all of his developments in the physical building experience, and we can look around and see how things are progressing more and more, and that as the cornerstone of this church, Jesus Christ is indeed Lord. May our foundation be grounded on thee, deeper and deeper and deeper. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you. Just thank you, thank you for the activity of our limbs. Thank you for the thoughts being on you. Thank you for us just seeing you move in our lives and in creation. Thank you that as we sing, as we preach, as we speak, as we do the ministries of this worship time and of this congregation, may we say it's to the honor and glory of you being an awesome God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray this day. And we thank you for prayer. We thank you for a conversation with you. And as Fanny Crosby put it so nicely, when I go to thee, O God, in prayer, I'm able to go as friend with friend. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen.
and sisters, I share with you good news from the book of Psalm. And as this Psalm is lifted up, let us be mindful of what God is saying through scripture and hear God's voice in the reading of God's word and holy scripture. Listen to what God has to say to us in the 130th Psalm, verses one through eight. And it's known as a song of ascent. And listen to how from depths to the heights God takes us. Verse one, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could possibly stand? But with you there is forgiveness so that we can with reverence serve you. I, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits for God. And in God's word, I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. Mm -hmm. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with God is full redemption. God will redeem Israel from all their sins the word of God for the people of God. Thanks. Thanks be to God. It is my honor to introduce our preacher of the hour, Bishop Sharma D. Lewis. Bishop Lewis is the resident bishop of the Virginia Conference and became the first African-American woman to be elected bishop in the southeastern jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church in 2016. Prior to her Episcopal assignment, Bishop Lewis held a distinguished record of service in the North Georgia Conference, including her appointment as a district superintendent of the Atlanta the Cater Oxford District. She is a gifted evangelist. Her remarkable uh, pastoral leadership at Wesley Chapel, which was a three-year uh, tenure, led to over 600 new and restored members and worship attendance doubled. Her ministry there culminated as she received the Harry Denman Award for Evangelism. Following the sermonic selection, we will hear word of hope through God's servant, Bishop Sharma D. Lewis.
Beloved, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Can I get an amen? Good morning, Asbury United Methodist Church. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge and thank your pastor, Reverend Dr. Iantha Mills, for this wonderful opportunity to preach this morning as a part of the 2021 Ebony Bishops Preaching Series. Asbury, I also would like to commend your diligent and faithful work in ministry for many years with the leadership of Dr. Mills. If you have your Bible, please turn with me to Psalm 130, verses 1 through 8. Psalm 130, verses 1 through 8. I would like to encourage you all to read the entire text when you have an opportunity to go home. But for this sermonic moment, let us focus only on Psalm 130, verse 5. Psalm 130, verse 5. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And his word I put my hope. Let me read that again. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And his word I put my hope. I am reading from the New International Version and the word of God for the precious people of God. And we all say together, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Sunday day, God. And we thank you, Lord, for Dr. Mills and the members and the visitors that are here with Asbury United Methodist Church. God, I thank you and pray for an opportunity to preach your word on hope. And God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable to you, God, because God, you are my rock. You are my redeemer. God, you are our savior. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. My brothers and sisters, 15 or even 16 months ago, we were all gathered in our churches. Choirs were singing anthems or hymns. We were all busy doing ministry. We were all overworked. And no one had heard of the names of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, or even Breonna Taylor. And what was COVID-19? If we're honest with ourselves, some of us didn't even know how to spell pandemic or realize the severity of this global disease. We didn't recognize that once again, we would be marching for justice and Black Lives Matter rallies were going to be reactivated. Although much has changed since March of 2020, we now have a new administration of Biden and Harris here in the U.S., we are on what we are calling the back end of COVID, fighting for our voters' rights. And our denomination is still unsettled with two postponed general conferences. We, as people of God, are still hoping. We are still hoping and seeking hope in these unprecedented times. Beloved, we may be uncertain what tomorrow brings, but this morning, I want to remind all listeners that there is hope in the midst of hardship. There is hope in the midst of hardship. Hardship, described by Google, as I looked up the word, is severe suffering. Hardship can come in many forms. Illness, change of employment status, loss of income, natural disasters, pandemic, divorce, and even death. However, hope, H-O-P-E, described by the New Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, is looking forward with confidence to a future good. Looking forward with confidence to a future good. See, this goes without saying that folks all across this country is hoping that things will get back to what we think is normal hoping that loved ones could still be found in the Florida condo collapse 
and even hoping that the new administration of Biden and Harris could change this world and change this economy. Beloved, the Bible has a lot to say about hope. Hope does not arise from individuals' desires or wishes, but from God who is the believer's hope. Genuine hope is not wishful thinking, but a firm assurance about things that are unseen and still in the future. The Bible states that when we have faith in Jesus Christ, we have a hope for things eternal, things that will never decay or even waste away. C.S. Lewis states that hope, hope is one of the theological virtues and something that a Christian is meant to do. We have hope in Jesus Christ, which means that we can approach any hardship or sufferings with vigor and strength. As we examine the text for the day, the psalmist writes in verses one through four that he is in a low and deep place crying to the Lord. Asbury, I ask you this morning, have you ever been in a low and deep place in life? But let us look at verses one and two in the text. These verses say, out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. See, beloved scholars believe that this low place, this depth represents what when we hit rock bottom and we realize that we ourselves can't fix life on our own. Eugene Peterson, the author of the Message Bible, translates this verse like this. Help God, the bottom has fallen out of my life. See, whether the problem is financial or relational or illnesses or even death, we have all been in a low and deep place in our lives in which we have suffered deep and personal pain. But beloved, I ask you this question, in the midst of everything, when did you cry out to the Lord? Was it when we realized in March of 2020 that our church doors were going to be closed? Or did we cry out to the Lord when the ordinary conveniences of, believe it or not, getting our hair cut or our nails done was something put on the back burner? Or did we cry out to the Lord when we still witness our brothers and sisters still being killed by police for just being black? As we also examine and to continue to look at the text, verses five and six indicates we wait. We wait for the Lord expectantly. See, beloved, hope is also defined in the Nelson Bible Dictionary as confident expectancy. Let me say that again. Hope is also defined in the Nelson's Bible Dictionary as confident expectancy. In these two verses, in verses five and six, the psalmist repeats not once but five times that his hope is in the Lord. This was a confident expectation in the God who is always faithful to God's promises. See, beloved, I want to tell you this morning, don't base your hope on your feelings or your present circumstances. Don't base your hope on the latest Facebook post or tweet. But beloved, I'm here to remind you to base your hope on the word of God and trust God promises that God have revealed to us in God's scripture. See, trust is the confidence in the character of God. And when you know God's character, no matter what you are confronted with, you have the ability to walk by faith and not by sight. And can we get an amen? God is consistent with God's nature. God's character can not be contrary to God's nature. 
So while we are waiting in this in-between time of a postponed general conference, while we are waiting in this in-between time for this vaccine to totally eradicate COVID-19, while we are waiting for the uncertainties of life, I instruct you and encourage you to pray like the psalmist David did in Psalm 5 verses 3. And this text says that in the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait in expectation. Finally, my brothers and sisters, as we wait, we must put our hope in the Lord. This psalm moves from the experience of an individual to that of the community at large. And according to the text in verses seven and eight, it reads, with the Lord is unfailing love, with the Lord is full redemption, and finally the Lord will redeem God's people from their sins. But beloved, I want you to know that the Bible reveals in Psalm 39, seven, our hope is in the Lord. Psalm 71, 14 states, I will hope continually and will praise you yet more and more. Romans 12, verse 12 reminds us to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Romans 8, 25 says, if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. And also 1 Timothy 1, 1 states that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ that went down on Friday, stayed down on Saturday, but on Sunday morning, got up with all power in his hand. And it states in 1 Timothy 1, 1 that Jesus Christ is our hope. Our hope is not in our jobs. Our hope is not in our just, uh, denomination. Our hope is in Jesus Christ that is eternal. But beloved here at Asbury, if you are still not convinced there is a songwriter named Edward Moat who wrote a song, who wrote a hymn that says to us in the Methodist church that we like to sing that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Y'all can say it along with me. My hope is built on nothing less but Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. My brothers and sisters, today, your greatest hope is in Jesus Christ. The Christian message is a message of hope. And in these hard times, in these uncertain times, in these unprecedented times, there is hope this morning for the hurting. There is hope this morning for the helpless. There is hope this morning in healing. And I pray that when you leave this church this morning, that you will know that there is still hope in the midst of hardship. Hope, H-O-P-E confident expectancy. What are you expecting from Jesus Christ this morning? Hope in the midst of hardship. Let us pray. Almighty God, as we come today to hold on, hold on unto our hope. We know as believers that our hope is in your son, Jesus Christ. Move us, God, as people of faith, to know that no matter our circumstances, no matter our trials, no matter our tribulations, we can stand firm in our believer's hope. Touch us this day, almighty God. Breathe your mighty spirit on your children. Remind us, God, that there is hope in Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the people of God said amen 
Amen and amen. We have indeed been encouraged and filled with hope this morning. We know without a doubt that God loves us, forgives us, redeems, and receives us. And so if you are searching for peace in your life, if you want to know uh, about being, more about being a Christian or how to deepen your relationship and walk with the Lord, or if you want to reunite with this congregation, with Asbury, we invite you to connect with us at prayer at asburyumcdc.org and one of our pastors will be in touch. We continue now in worship with our giving of our tithes and offerings. On Easter Sunday, our trustees launched a Mission Possible capital campaign for critical repairs to our sanctuary and historic building and improvements to our audiovisual capability. We invite you to share gifts to the Mission Possible Capital Campaign at one of these giving levels. Founders, 10,000 and above. Leaders, 5,000 and above. Visionaries, 2,500. Champions, 1,000. Builders, 500, partners, 250, and friends, 100. Now let us pray. Generous and giving God, you have poured your blessings upon us. You have lavished us with redemption, forgiveness, and grace. Remind us this day, as we make our gifts to you, that we have been blessed for a purpose, that we might be a blessing to others. And so may we grow in compassion, in mercy, in longing for justice and love as Christ loved us in his holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Your gifts to our general fund and our mission possible cap capital campaign make it possible for Asbury to fulfill his mission and ministry throughout the year. Please take a moment now to make a gift to support ministry here at Asbury. There are three ways that you can give. You can give online by going to our homepage at asburyumcdc.org and clicking the give button. The second way that that you can give is, is to give through your financial institution and give electronically. And the third way is to write a check to Asbury United Methodist Church and mail it to 926 11th Street, Northwest, Washington, D.C., 20001. Thank you for your generosity and for your continued commitment to ministry with us.
Jesus washed my sins away. I know the Lord is with his hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord is with his hands on me. Oh, I know the Lord. I know the Lord. I know the Lord is with his hands on me. Oh, I know. Oh,
And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we gather together again. Go now in peace and go to love and to serve your neighbor. And your neighbor is everyone, everywhere. Amen. Amen. serve with us online at asburyumcdc.org. Until next time, be blessed. <laughs>